Hello there. Well, I ending a video I working on. I noticed a YouTuber who, well, react to Tony Sonic. Anything wrong with videos? Which I find with that, except he. Well, I will explain and show clips what I talk about. Without further ado, let's react to it. You know what? I'm a political blogger. I already talk about politics enough. I think I'm going to commentate on something apolitical today. And I have found the perfect topic to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Tony Sonic, a YouTuber who is a massive Sonic fan, which we both have in common, and who has done various Everything Wrong With parodies on Shari 5's Everything Wrong With parodies of various video games, mostly Sonic. The specific video I'm going to be covering is his Everything Wrong With, Everything Wrong With on Shari 5's classic Sonic videos, in which he responds to Shari 5's videos on Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic CD, and Sonic Spinball. So, with all of that said, let's get into this. Um, why react to anything wrong with Char 5, anything wrong with Sonic Classic games? What it could do with, you know, the first video of Tony Sonic, which he explained why he doing it? I mean, seriously. It's right there. Unless you're one of those people afraid of a uh, copyright, copyright. <laughs> ah, I hate copyright. <sighs> anyway, continue on. I feel like I should make a joke about the Keen Master watermark, but I honestly can't think of anything. Yeah, so? What's the point of that? It makes sense. To show us what he using, mate. Seriously, what's a Cybertron? Also, what joke you about to use? No, seriously, what the joke you about to use? You did cover that in the description, mate. Ow, my eyes! What do I even look at? Okay, Tony, this display looks terrible. All you essentially did was just put your own sin counter at the top of the video. Which is a bit of an issue because now I can't see Shari's sin counter. Wouldn't it have made more sense to change the resolution of the video so it could fit your sin counter as well as Shari's? Just saying. Yeah, that is a bit off and confusing. Except his videos after this one, he did, you know, explain that to. Uh, Charlie's video sin counter it's strangely off for some reason. Like, seriously. Also, we know why I said that you should check Tony's first video, Mike? Yeah, he explained who he inspired by. And who inspired? The Birdman, who had the same way, just had the bond be cover up. And yes, just like Tony Sonic, he's also pointing out that Simon Sin's Sin counter errors. But also time over at some point at these videos as well. Okay, I've heard several people complain about this part, but as someone who's played Sonic 1 a bunch, I've never had this problem, so what gives? You've never had what problem? The only thing Shari said was that he personally felt the special stages didn't look very good. Are you saying you've never had issues looking at them? Okay, well, how does that disprove Shari's point? Especially considering Shari's point was entirely subjective. Then you need a hearing aid. Practice, clearly, because he said... Ow, my eyes, what do I even look at? He is talking about... His eyes are aching from the bright light from the special zone. You donkey. So wait, you give us this wall that we're supposed to roll into, but you didn't give us an easier way to dash while spinning into it? Come on, that's more than enough space to work up a roll. 
Really? Because the footage clearly showed Shari attempting to roll and only breaking through about half of the wall. Yeah, but Chara 5 wanna go all the way through the wall, mate. Which, if you watch Tony Sonic's videos, you realize Chari is a big CRYING BABY, mate. So, wait, you give us this wall that we're supposed to roll into, but you didn't give us an easier way to dash while spinning into it? You put the special stage ring right after the goalpost, which takes away my control after I touch it? It is possible to run back to it if you're fast enough. Okay, I assume you're referring to that glitch where if you jump at the right time, you can walk around the end screen while it's loading the next level and while it's calculating your points and all that. And if that is what you're referring to... You do know that's a glitch, right? As in something the programmers didn't intend to happen? As I said before, he's is a big crying baby. He's bitching about it every time making a video, mate. Also, you mentioned a glitch involved with that golden ring, which I check it up, and there's no sign of that glitch. I mean, seriously, the only closest thing is the debug mode glitch, but that's it. That's just a debug mode, not an actual gameplay mode, mate. So, what are you talking about, mate? Seriously, what are you talking about? Did you like the high-speed platforming and fun level design of Green Hill Zone? Great, f*** you, here's slow-ass Marble Zone. That's called variety. I guess, but Shari's point was more that it was a very jarring change. Especially when you consider how fast Green Hill Zone was, compared to how slow Marble Zone was. The issue at hand is not that Marble Zone is different from Green Hill Zone, it's that the game suddenly shifts from Green Hill Zone to a zone that is incredibly different. Yeah, but I said before, Charlie is, well, acting like a Karen, and never cares it is perfect. Seriously. Also, what the heck is going on in your background? What the heck? Well, that's boring. That's slightly less boring. Wait, this special stage is different from the last one I failed at. I have to cycle through special stages? How can I practice them? You can't, and you should get used to it because several subsequent Sonic games don't let you practice the special stages. Okay, well that doesn't exactly disprove Shari's point. Yeah, that's the case in other Sonic games. That doesn't mean it's still not a problem. For that matter, let's actually talk about the games you used as examples. Your example of Sonic Advance, I guess, works. However, you ignore the fact that in Sonic Advance, the Chaos Emeralds are tied to each of the seven zones. Hence why you can only get the Chaos Emerald in that specific zone. Meanwhile, your comparison to Sonic 3 Ampersand Knuckles just doesn't work, because although the special stages do cycle in that game, you have many more chances to get them than you do in Sonic 1. For those who don't know, in Sonic 1 you can only get one special stage in the first two acts of each zone except Scrap Brain, so you have ten chances to get all six Chaos Emeralds. In 3 Ampersand Knuckles, how many special stages you can get in every level varies from level to level, but there are overall 77 special rings, meaning you have 77 chances to get all 7 Chaos Emeralds and all 7 Super Emeralds. Again, compared to the 10 you have to get the 6 Chaos Emeralds in Sonic 1. Well, you had a point on the Sonic & Knuckles games, which, wow, Tony Sonic didn't realize that. But you mentioned Sonic Event, uh, Sonic Hedgehog 1. Uh, 10 wings. Yes, you get a second chance, but 
a chance is a chance. And that would be, you know, slight sense, right? Plus, the only way to obtain the... No, not obtain, uh, summon the special rings is, well, collect 15 rings. Which, some of the zones, alright, but others, um, nobody did nope, nope, nope. Does that say cope? What, did you know I was having a hard time playing this game? Chari points out things on the screen, cliche. Also, you're struggling with Sonic 1? Sonic 1 is the simplest of the classic Sonic games. If you're struggling with this game, then you suck. First off, nice elitism there, Tony Sonic. Can I touch it? Really? You use the word turn for a female gay? Might? Really? I think there's a certain type of a pirate dog train. No, not that type of pirate. No, but he'd be cool at it. There we go. Well, how to talk to you, mate. Oh, and also... Ow! Go to horny jail. <laughs> Second off, I like how you say it's the simplest, not the easiest, and then say it's an issue that Charmy is struggling with it. Again, even though simple and easy are not the same things. For example, the original Mega Man is an overall simpler game than, say, Mega Man 5 or 6. But most people would argue that the first Mega Man is harder than 5 or 6. Do you see the issue here? Okay, 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 okay I think sport. we heard enough. Okay. Why does Cybertron you choose Mega Man, the gun shooter game, as comparison to Sonic difficulty? You realize Sonic is a runner, which it had involved with the, you know, spin attack, and Mega Man is a shooter, as in hold and shoot precision. Might. Seriously, like, seriously, you can't compare it to another game that has similar to Sonic, but no, you have to go for the gunner type of guy. <sighs> seriously. I mean... <sighs> Labyrinth Zone. The meme is dead and it should feel dead. What does that even mean? How do you feel dead? And yes, I know it's a Futurama reference. But the actual line was, your music is bad and you should feel bad, which makes sense because you can actually feel bad. You can't feel dead, especially if you're a meme, meaning you don't even materially exist, nor can you feel anything. Does he not know what the dead mean means? A dead mean means it's become... In a brief, if, if, whatever that word pronounce, and unfunny due to the age. Or overwhelm cringe worthy use. So you should check it out what the dead mean mean, might. Seriously, it's a thing that is called Google. Look it up, might. Look it up. Let me. Uh. How the hell am I supposed to know to hold back in order to actually jump off this water slide? You figure it out. Well, I can't argue with that. No need to sarcastic, mate. This game was made in the era where games tell you almost nothing, so it's our only option. Yeah, and that led to a variety of highly cryptic games that were badly designed because of just how cryptic they were. Super Pitfall, Mylon's Secret Castle, Simon's Quest, all of these come to mind as examples. Yeah, that is off. Except the Sonic the Hedgehog 1 is a thing since 1991. Meaning that it's, um, you know, doesn't have the question mark games that the 3D game does have, might? 
This isn't really a boss battle, this is just platforming. I mean, you still have to hit Eggman, don't you? No, you don't. You just have to survive the gauntlet and make it to the capsule at the end of the stage. You don't have to hit Eggman a single time to beat this boss. In fact, it's not really a boss so much as it is more an obstacle course, if I'm being honest. Yeah, you had a point on the, you know, not only a boss fight, but a chase one. Exit is a YouTuber who, well, listed as, uh, well, being a part of a boss battle. No, seriously, check it out, mate. Sound produce? I don't know if vegetables made sound in this game. Heh <laughs> heh, funny. But seriously, typos aren't sins. They're nitpicks. Okay, first off, nitpicks are sins. That's kind of how this whole format works. You're supposed to nitpick the product you're sinning. Second off, why aren't typos sins exactly? There's still something wrong with the product that therefore could count as an issue with it, so why can't they count as sins? Like I said to Keyblade Master, nitpicks aren't wrong, they're just minor and usually irrelevant to the overall quality of the product. Yeah, except Chara 5 always, oh, I know, nitpicks anything on the games that he's doing, might. I mean, seriously, he does. He's been using it, mate. He's, he's misusing it, mate. H how? I don't know why Chara 5 is doing this. Nitpicks are not sin. Yeesh. Also, really? You still talk about the produce? Nitpicks, mate. Discount Green Hill Zone. Sorry, but that doesn't work since Emerald Hill is different in both looks and design. How? They're both open green areas that exist to teach you how to play the game. They're also both fast-paced, and oh yeah, the second word in both of their names is literally the same. How are they different exactly? Oh, I don't know, maybe, uh, this might? Seriously, look at the between them. One of them is mountain terrain with waterfall at the background, while the other is a lush green land. And yes, I know they're both called hills at the name, but doesn't mean you have to connect them as one. All Asian nugget, uh, I mean, uh, all country nugget saying, you racist motherfucker. Okay, how is that a boss? Because it still attacks you, even though it's really slow, and you still have to attack it. Wait, so your definition of a boss is just something that attacks you and something that you have to attack? You do know under that definition, basically every badnik in this game would count as a boss, right? Oh, boy. You need to stop compare one word or place, or something that is out of order, as same, right? Stop that. Seriously, stop it. When he said, it attacks you, Tony Sonic refer to the boss fight, not the Batnik fight. You know, these little robots. Ugh. We had a really fucking fair ground or just bust out of the wall while I have very little time to react. You really expected the bad guys to play fair? Not to mention the wall he breaks out of is colored a bit differently, which could tip you off. How dare he want the game to have fair level design? Is it just me or does this sound less like a response and more like apologetics? No. Because... Tony Sonic is act like a father to Chara Fies who act as a teenager, might A whiny, brat, stupid child that doesn't grow up, might 
Who doesn't use bro attacks in Mario and Luigi? Doesn't use bro's attack in Mario and Luigi games for prime sake. Why are Sonic and Tails' names and faces plastered all over this casino? Do they own it? Who built this place? Nobody cares! Hey! Nobody cares! First off, lol XD funny media clip of SMG4. Second off, okay, so nobody cares, and therefore that's an issue because... Again, the point of these videos is to be somewhat nitpicky. And even if you are right that nobody cares, that doesn't exactly prove Shari 5 wrong. You do understand that, right? Of course you don't. You f idiot. Chari always question about anything and Tony Sonic only seen him with that because Chari never shut up. Even Sonic 06, which you should look it up at today, you realize that Tony Sonic, I mean Chara 5, Always complain about it. So yeah. Charifies deserve that sin. You idiot. Oh, I guess there's just no boss. Act 3? What is it, Sonic 1? While I will admit that Metropolis Zone is pretty hard by this game's standards, a third act isn't too bad considering it's the second last level of the game. No, Sky Chase and Death Egg Zone don't count as levels. More like chase sequences and final battlegrounds. So, wait, Sky Chase doesn't count as a level because it's a chase sequence, so does the first act of Marood Shaloon from Sonic Mania also not count as a level under this way of thinking? Oh, also, Shari's issue wasn't that the third act of Metropolis Zone was hard, I don't even know where you got that. It was that Metropolis Zone was the only zone in the game to have three acts. Okay, first of all, it's pronounced Mirage, not Marouge. Where you get the O from, mate? There's no O in the word. I mean, seriously, we learned the word from the Transformer named Barrage, mate. Where you get the O from? Michael Bay brain? F*** you. Second of all, what chase section are you talking about? The only section we do is flying around a plane, Get shoot out of the gun. Yes, there's a gun in the uh, Sonic Mania. No, oh, this is not the first one. <clears throat> and fighting this caterpillar thing before it got shut down in the first act. In the second act, at the end of the uh, stage, we fight a clone of Fang. Yeah. What chase level are you talking about, mate? And also, if you play Sonic Advance 2, Scrap Brain Zone, you have some struggle at every area that you try to, you know, encounter with. I mean, for prime's sake, this bug really f you in the worst way impossible, mate. Seriously, did you even play Sonic at that Sonic the Hedgehog 2, mate? What did you even think that laser was gonna do? At least he didn't sit there like, oh, I guess it's time to die. And? D do you actually have an argument against what Shari is saying? No? Okay. This video is terrible. Well, if you pay attention to the footage you're using, you notice that Eggman is shooting, meaning he is moving. Try to hit Sonic and Tails, mate. In other words, you f blind. You donkey. 
I can't believe they expect people to beat two bosses in a row. One which takes eight hits and the other takes 16 with zero rings. Not one damn safety net. Well, excuse the game for wanting to give you a challenging final boss. I know someone's going to argue with me on this, but to that I say man up and fight the damn robot. So your entire argument basically comes down to get good scrub. Okay. Wow. Really? Really? As I said before, Chori is a f***ing Karen. He doesn't give a damn that the game is perfect. I don't mind some, but others... These special stages are disorienting as hell with their trippy-ass backgrounds and pseudo-3D. Why would you focus on the background? That's not where the action is. Because it's still part of the special stage, and it's incredibly, for lack of a better word, noticeable. <laughs> also, speak for yourself with the pseudo-3D. You know, say everything you want about Shari's videos. At least he's like giving reasons as to why he feels the way he does. Unlike you, who is just saying, well, I don't agree, and then calling it a day. Speak for yourself is not an argument. It's a statement, and a pretty obvious one at that. Like, yeah, obviously he's speaking for himself. Who else would he be speaking for, exactly? But even if you don't agree, just pointing out that he is, in fact, speaking for himself doesn't disprove what he's saying. And yet, arguments like that, these sentence-long rebuttals that basically come down to no you. Or no, not even no you. I'm gonna correct myself on that. It's more like, you're saying that. <laughs> You don't even have the no, you're just saying you, and then calling it an argument. Is most of your rebuttals, giant quotes, to Shari's claims. This video's incredibly infuriating because of that. Okay, 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 I think we heard enough. As I said before, Shari is a f Karen. That doesn't have a f brain. I mean, what the Say, you should watch Charlie's video, and after watching it, you realize what, or should I say, why Tony did. For sake. Ugh, I need a drink. This is factually the worst boss in Sonic the Hedgehog history. Sonic 4's Metal Robotnik has entered the chat. Uh, quick question. How? The Metal Robotnik fight is, at the very least, a lot harder than the fight in Sonic CD that Shari is showing. If only because... the Metal Robotnik boss can actually hurt you, while Robotnik in this fight has springs on his arms. That can't hurt you. Now, I should note, this was most likely done because it's the first boss and it was meant to be a simple introduction to how the bosses in Sonic CD work. For those who don't know, Sonic CD's bosses are quite a bit different than the bosses in the other Sonic Genesis games. In the sense, the goal isn't so much to just mindlessly hit Robotnik eight times, as it is to go through this almost puzzle in order to figure out how exactly to hit Robotnik. Robotnik usually only goes down in a couple of hits. But actually hitting him is much harder in every CD boss than it would be in even the most difficult bosses in Sonic 1, 2, or 3 ampersand Knuckles. Sorry, I'm making a point more complicated than a simplistic quip, or, in the case of Tony Sonic, a uh, you argument. So, my mistake, let's get back to the video. I'm about to argument at you. That was until someone respond in the comment, and guess who respond to it? Okay, maybe me, but guess who did it first before I did? Yes, it's Tony Sonic. 
and we spawn from the robotic comet and said the death egg robot is one of most iconic bosses in sonic history because it's difficulty yeah it may be hard but people love it because of that unlike robotnik better robotnik besides who so hard it's bullshit so yeah you triggered anyone by that my I mean seriously what the fuck <laughs> my eyes funny but you already sinned this hey look it's bounced the level hey look who cares where do I go figure it out or stay here forever wimp so Shari sitting the same thing multiple times is bad, but you sitting the same thing multiple times is okay, I guess. Okay, I don't understand what your editor is doing because what the f*** is going on with the background, mate? What the f***? Well, that and Tony Stark did like the Birdman and at a video where Char of Five or similar sins multiple sin I mean jeez or reez Am I surrounded by idiot similar sins fans or Metal Blade 5? Yes Eggman made an instant death laser that ignores my ring count and never uses it again. Because he's made several superior machines since then. Name one. Because the only other thing I can think of that Robotnik's come up with that ignores your ring count in any other Sonic game is the hand in one boss in Sonic Advance 2. When Tony Sonic says superior machine, he refer robots that is Surpass the original, mate. As in, out of the old and into the new, mate. That is way better. Bigger, better, faster, stronger, mate. I mean, in Sonic Fans 1, Eggman think that Beta is better than Gamma. And Omega is much more superior to the most of the E series robots. Are you saying these are not count as superior robots? I mean, seriously. What the f? Cool, I love that for bonus stage I get to play more pinball. Everything wrong with Sonic Spinball, ladies and gentlemen. A pinball platformer makes you play pinball. But what if he just wants some of that variety you defended Marble Zone with? Huh? This video is so frustrating to watch. This video is very frustrated. Shut up, man! Even when you die, and trust me, you will die in this game. Every path you unlock resets means you have to unlock everything again. <laughs> And you can say, oh, that's not so bad, it's just pinball. No, it is not. The objective of pinball is to score points no more. Here, I have to get emeralds, we should beat the boss, and move on to the next stage, which is impossible with a pinball platformer. And yes, you can slightly move left and right midair, but that hardly makes a difference if you're bouncing off shit all the time, picking up momentum every time you do. Hey, this is normal for games that came out in the 90s. What's normal? He listed, like, three things there. Do you mean they're not being checkpoints? Because that's wrong. Most other games in the 90s did have checkpoints. And I gotta stop you right there, because... Tony Sonic is referring to pinball games on the 90s. You donkey. I mean, seriously. It, there's no checkpoint at pinball games. Only scores, mate. I mean, seriously. Pokemon pinball game. They don't have checkpoints, mate. I mean, seriously. How did you not realize that Tony Sonic refer to pinball games? 
from the 90s. You donkey. B, it's not impossible. It's difficult, but not impossible. For those of us who are competent. And C, you can still control Sonic's movement a little bit. Shari acknowledged that before basically saying that it didn't matter because of just how much you were bouncing off of in Spinball. And yes, you can slightly move left and right midair, but that hardly makes a difference if you're bouncing off shit all the time, picking up momentum every time you do. Okay, you had a point that Shari did mention the movement and Tony didn't, well, hear that part. Anyway, literally none of his other points are even slightly interesting, so I'm going to end it here. Final thoughts? This video just came off like he was trying to respond to Shari through making as many quips as possible as opposed to actually arguing against what Shari was saying. I understand that these everything wrong with videos are usually very simplified, however, this was so much so to the point where I'm not even sure what he was trying to argue half the time. Overall, this video was just an incredibly frustrating watch as I continuously had to guess as to what his point even was. And the fact that he was more focused with just saying, you're wrong, as opposed to actually explaining why Shari's wrong didn't help matters. Good night, and good luck. <sighs> By the spark of life, this guy really doesn't pay attention or even research what Tony is doing. And yes, he had some good points about the the movement, pinball move thing. But the rest, holy Cybertron. And I cannot believe to say this, but there is someone that is incompetent YouTuber of all time. Then Ace Trainer Liam. Like... Wow, I can't believe this guy really never... <sighs> Jeez, a race. Hey, you dumbasses, flat earthers. Next time you do YouTube videos, use the Google, mates. Seriously, it's right there. Research it. God. Ugh. Hey guys, sorry about the uh, what happened before. I had to relax for a moment. And if anyone noticed, I didn't do anything wrong with video this time. But a reaction video. Why? Well, I want to, you know, defend my bird brothers, mate. And yes, I call the group Bird Brothers. Because the Birdman started all. So, yeah. I am the reaction video to defend them from the reaction videos that is, well... Make no sense. And if this guy tried to reaction video to my brother's videos, well... If you mess with the wolf, you get the fangs. So, yeah. You will get that. Hello there. Hello, light bright recreation of a racist caricature you'd find in a 1930s cartoon. How have you been? And more importantly, why do you have a bloody Nike symbol over your head? Also, Kind Master Watermark. Well, i ending a video I'm working on. I notice a YouTuber who, well, react to Tony Sonic. Anything wrong with videos? Little nitpick, but I didn't react to Tony Sonic's video, I commentated on it. Reacting to the video would imply that I hadn't watched the video before and was watching it for the first time with the audience. In truth, I had watched Tony Sonic's video several times beforehand in order to formulate counter-arguments against it, which is what commentating is.
You know what? I'm a political blogger. I already talk about politics enough. I think I'm going to commentate on something apolitical today. And I have found the perfect topic to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Tony Sonic, a YouTuber who is a massive Sonic fan, which we both have in common, and who has done various Everything Wrong with Parodies on Shari 5's Everything Wrong with Parodies of various video games, mostly Sonic. The specific video I'm going to be covering is his Everything Wrong with, Everything Wrong with on Shari 5's classic Sonic videos, in which he responds to Shari 5's videos on Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic CD, and Sonic Spinball. So, with all of that said, let's get into this. Um, why react to anything wrong with Char 5, anything wrong with Sonic Classic games? Why do you do with, you know, the first video of Tony Sonic? Which he explained why he doing it? I mean, seriously. It's right there. Oh, the answer is actually quite simple. I have played the classic Sonic games, but I've never played Super Mario Odyssey. As such, I would not be able to counter Tony Sonic's points on Super Mario Odyssey, because, to be honest, I'd have no idea if they're correct or not. For that matter, why would watching his first video specifically be useful in this case? I mean, are his videos serialized? No? then there'd be no reason to start with the first one specifically. For that matter, if you're so dedicated to me picking the first video from Tony Sonic, why didn't you cover my first commentary? Which was on Carmen Ryder. Unless you're one of those people afraid of, uh, copyright, copyright, <laughs> Ah, I hate copyright. <sighs> anyway, continue on. You do know my videos have shown footage from Nintendo games before, right? Just check my commentaries on Keyblade Master, Copycat, and Firebolt Numbers as co-op if you don't believe me. Again, it had nothing to do with a fear of copyright, it had to do with the fact that I've never played Odyssey. I feel like I should make a joke about the Keen Master watermark, but I honestly can't think of anything. Yeah, so? What's the point of that? It makes sense to show us what he using, mate. So you'd have no issue with me putting the word shotcut in giant text over all of my videos? I mean, that is the editing software I am using, so it would make sense to do that, right? Seriously, what's a Cybertron? Also, what joke you about to use? No, seriously, what the joke you about to use? You did comment that in the description, mate. I didn't have a joke. That's why I directly said I couldn't think of any. <laughs> okay, Tony, this display looks terrible. All you essentially did was just put your own sin counter at the top of the video, which is a bit of an issue because now I can't see Shari's sin counter. Wouldn't it have made more sense to change the resolution of the video so it could fit your sin counter as well as Shari's? Just saying. Yeah, that is a bit off and confusing, except his videos after this one, he did, you know, explain that to, uh, Charlie's video sin counter is strangely off for some reason. Really, are you going to show us where? And for that matter, are you going to explain how this disproves my argument considering throughout that same video, his video on Sonic Adventure 2, Tony Sonic does still tend to leave Shari's sin counter cropped out? Like, seriously. Also, you know what I said that you should check Tony's first video, Mike? Yeah, he explained who he inspired by. And who inspired? The Birdman, who had the same way, just had the bond be cover up. And yes, just like Tony Sonic, he's also pointing out that Simonson's sin counter errors. But also time at some point at these videos as well. 
Okay, well, I also take issue with the Birdman doing it in his videos, so I don't see how this is even slightly relevant. For reference, the only real Cinema Sins Sins channel I've gotten into was JXE, and if you watch his videos... And what do you know, Xy has managed to have the original video Sin Counter in all of his Sin Sins videos dating back to his very first one. If Xy could do it in 2017, why can't Tony Sonic and the Birdman do it today? You've never had what problem? The only thing Shari said was that he personally felt the special stages didn't look very good. Are you saying you've never had issues looking at them? Okay, well, how does that disprove Shari's point? Especially considering Shari's point was entirely subjective. Then you need a hearing aid. Practice, clearly, because he said... Ow, my eyes, what do I even look at? He is talking about his eyes are aching from the bright light from the special zone. You... Donkey. Okay, first off, I think this is the first time I've ever been called a donkey in a commentary before. But second off, yeah, I'm aware of what Shari said. Tony Sonic then denied it. I pointed out it's subjective, and you restated Shari's point under the impression I didn't understand it, and then called me a donkey. How does this disprove what I said? Really? Because the footage clearly showed Shari attempting to roll, and only breaking through about half of the wall. Yeah, but Chara 5 wanna go all the way through the wall, mate. I assumed so. Which, if you watch Tony Sonic's videos, you realize Chari is a big... CRYING BABY! My- Okay... Well, that doesn't disprove my point. If anything, this is just an ad hominem attack by proxy, considering you aren't even insulting me to prove me wrong. You're insulting Shari to prove me wrong. Okay, I assume you're referring to that glitch where if you jump at the right time, you can walk around the- end screen while it's loading the next level and while it's calculating your points and all that. And if that is what you're referring to, you do know that's a glitch, right? As in something the programmers didn't intend to happen? As I said before, he's is a big crying baby! You know, if you're going to keep making this argument, I should also point out that babies cry because there's something wrong, such as they're hungry or they've soiled themselves. Saying that somebody's a crying baby doesn't mean they're wrong necessarily, it just means they're overreacting emotionally. At least, that's what I assume because there's so little meat to this argument, it almost constitutes an anti-point. Also, you mentioned a glitch involved with that golden ring, which I check it up, and there's no sign of that glitch. I mean, seriously, the only closest thing is the debug mode glitch. Debug mode is not a glitch, it's a feature intentionally left in the game. Oh, also, with how much this guy pauses, this video is going to be incredibly long if I don't start cutting them out, so I'm going to start doing so. But that's it. That's just a debug mode, not an actual gameplay mode, mate. So, what are you talking about, mate? Susie, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, Willis? But as for what I'm talking about, it was actually surprisingly hard to find footage of this glitch, but here it is being demonstrated in the old Super Gaming Brothers playthrough. <laughs> I don't like the chaos armor anyway. <laughs> How do you do that, by the way? What? That. What are you doing? Moving while the actor's still playing? Mm-hmm. You jump before the music plays. Ah. 
Okay, well that doesn't exactly disprove Shari's point. Yeah, that's the case in other Sonic games. That doesn't mean it's still not a problem. For that matter, let's actually talk about the games you used as examples. Your example of Sonic Advance, I guess, works. However, you ignore the fact that in Sonic Advance, the Chaos Emeralds are tied to each of the seven zones. Hence why you can only get the Chaos Emerald in that specific zone. Meanwhile, your comparison to Sonic 3 Ampersand Knuckles just doesn't work, because although the special stages do cycle in that game, you have many more chances to get them than you do in Sonic 1. For those who don't know, in Sonic 1 you can only get one special stage in the first two acts of each zone except Scrap Brain, so you have ten chances to get all six Chaos Emeralds. In 3 Ampersand Knuckles, how many special stages you can get in every level varies from level to level, but there are overall 77 special rings, meaning you have 77 chances to get all 7 Chaos Emeralds and all 7 Super Emeralds. Again, compared to the 10 you have to get the 6 Chaos Emeralds in Sonic 1. Well, you had a point on the Sonic and Knuckles games, which, wow, Tony Sonic didn't realize that. But you mentioned Sonic Event, uh, Sonic Hedgehog 1. Uh, 10 rings. Yes, you get a second chance, but a chance is a chance. And that would be, you know, slight sense, right? Okay, I'm not entirely sure, but I think his point is supposed to be that you can get a second chance at some of the special stages in Sonic 1. Which is true, and was also never the thing that was being debated. My point was simply that there were a lot more second chances in 3 Ampersand Knuckles than in Sonic 1, and therefore Tony Sonic's comparison is false. For reference, you can fail 4 special stages, assuming you get every special stage in the game and still get all 6 Chaos Emeralds in Sonic 1. In Sonic 3 Ampersand Knuckles, you need to complete 14 out of 77. That means you can fail 63 times, assuming you get every special stage, and still get all the Chaos and Super Emeralds. Do you not see the massive difference? Plus, the only way to obtain the... No, not obtain, uh, summon the special rings is, well, collect... 15 rings. No, you collect 50 rings, not 15. I'm aware this user probably has a speech impediment, but you need to enunciate clearly if you want to make videos like this, because otherwise you come off like you don't know what you're talking about. First off, nice elitism there, Tony Sonic. Can I touch it? Really? Use the word turn for a female gay? My I mean, it's a totally accurate term. Rudy is saying it in reference to Maria, who, yeah, is a lesbian. Also, I like how you're saying that, like, the word lesbian is some massive taboo. It's really not. Really? I think there's a certain type of a pirate dog train. No, not that type of pirate. No, but he'd be cool at it. There we go. Well, how to talk to you, mate. I have, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, absolutely no idea what the fuck is going on right now. Oh, and also... Ow! Go to horny jail. Okay, what did you think was going on in that panel exactly? I understand Rain is a somewhat obscure comic, so I'm not blaming you for not having read it, but I just don't know not only how you got from point A to point B, but also what point B even is in this case. Second off, I like how you say it's the simplest, not the easiest, and then say it's an issue that Charmy is struggling with it. Again, even though simple and easy are not the same things. For example, the original Mega Man is an overall simpler game than, say, Mega Man 5 or 6. 
But most people would argue that the first Mega Man is harder than five or six. Do you see the issue here? Okay, 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 okay I think we heard enough. Okay, why does Cybertron you choose Mega Man, the gun shooter game, as comparison to Sonic difficulty? You realize Sonic is a runner, which you had involved with the, you know, spin attack, and Mega Man is a shooter, as in hold and shoot position. Mate, seriously, it, seriously, you can compare it to another game that has similar to Sonic, but no, you have to go for the gunner type of guy. <sighs> seriously. I'm serial. Also, I'm sorry, Mr. Comparison Czar, but the reason why I compare the two games, despite the fact that they are in entirely different genres, is because it makes my point that simple does not equal easy. You don't actually do anything to address my comparison outside of calling Mega Man a gunner, whatever the hell that means. Instead, you just kind of scold me for making it because how dare I compare compare video games that aren't exactly the same in every way. What does that even mean? How do you feel dead? And yes, I know it's a Futurama reference, but the actual line was, your music is bad and you should feel bad, which makes sense because you can actually feel bad. You can't feel dead, especially if you're a meme. Okay, I actually checked this SMG4 video, and side note, Ugh, I had to watch an SMG4 video, and I couldn't find this quote. But even if it is there and I just missed it, I want to remind everyone that that video is a year old, while the Futurama episode in question is a decade and a half old. Meaning it's actually very likely the line in an SMG4 video would be referencing Futurama. Meaning you don't even materially exist, nor can you feel anything. Does he not know what the... Dead mean means a dead mean means it's become innovative, if it, whatever that word pronounce. The word you're trying to say is irrelevant and unfunny due to the age or overall cringe worthy use. So you should check it out what the dead mean means. Might seriously, it's a thing that is called Google. Look it up, mate. Look it up. Let me. The idea of a meme being dead wasn't the part that I was criticizing. It was the idea of something feeling dead. Also, why do you constantly feel the need to keep repeating your points? We heard you the first time. Yeah, and that led to a variety of highly cryptic games that were badly designed because of just how cryptic they were. Super Pitfall, Mylon's Secret Castle, Simon's Quest, all of these come to mind as examples. Yeah, that is off. Except the Sonic the Hedgehog 1 is a thing since 1991. Meaning that it's, um, you know, doesn't have the question mark games that the 3D game does have, might? Were you under the impression I was unaware of that? I'm so confused by this point. Yeah, the 3D games were more tutorial heavy than the 2D ones, starting with Sonic Adventure 1, which had to call. This was because that generation of gaming began using tutorials more, primarily in response to new players being unable to get into new genres of gaming, specifically because of how cryptic a lot of older games were. The idea was to widen the audience, essentially, as well as help the player learn how to play the game so they don't get frustrated. What's your point exactly? Okay, first off, nitpicks are sins, that's kinda how this whole format works. You're supposed to nitpick the product you're sinning. Second off, why aren't typos sins exactly? 
there's still something wrong with the product that therefore could count as an issue with it, so why can't they count as sins? Like I said to Keyblade Master, nitpicks aren't wrong, they're just minor and usually irrelevant to the overall quality of the product. Yeah, except Chara 5 always uh, I know, nitpicks anything on the games that he's doing. You mean he provides everything wrong with them? Hence why his videos are everything wrong with videos? I just cannot believe how many people seem to not get this. Yes, he nitpicks. Nitpicks are still things wrong with the product that don't matter. His videos are called everything wrong with. There's no asterisk after everything that says, aside from some really small nitpicks. How? They're both open green areas that exist to teach you how to play the game. They're also both fast-paced, and oh yeah, the second word in both of their names is literally the same. How are they different exactly? Oh, I don't know, maybe, uh, this might? Seriously. Look at the between them. One of them is mountain terrain. What the hell is mountainy about the terrain in Green Hill? Those are not tall and to be mountains, even taking into account perspective. And for that matter, I don't think I've ever seen a mountain with a tree that's equally as tall next to it, nor a waterfall at its peak. Side note, where would the peak of the mountain even be here? With waterfall at the back as mountains tend to grunt while the other is a lush green land so does green hill hence why it is literally called green hill zone and yes i know they're both called hills at the name but doesn't mean you have to connect them as one all asian look at uh i mean uh all country look at saying you racist motherfuck. No comment. Wait, so your definition of a boss is just something that attacks you and something that you have to attack? You do know under that definition, basically every badnik in this game would count as a boss, right? Oh boy. You need to stop compare one word or place or something that is our order as same, right? Stop that. Seriously, stop it. Still running, stop it, please, for God's sake, please stop it. There's no more time. You've got to, please, stop it. Stop it now, turn it off. Turn it off. Stop it. 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 When he said it attacks you, Tony Sonic refer to the boss fight, not the Batnik fight. You know, these little robots. Ugh. I understand that. My point was that Tony Sonic's definition of a boss was so vague, it could include the Batniks. Not that I honestly believed the Batniks and the bosses were the same thing or whatever it is you said. How dare he want the game to have fair level design. Is it just me, or does this sound less like a response and more like apologetics? No, because Tony Sonic is act like a father to Chara Fies who act as a teenager, might. In fact, despite the fact that Shari 5 is a bit of a handful, mate, and sometimes has emotional meltdowns where he says things to Tony Sonic like, You're not my real dad, mate. Tony Sonic still loves him and respects him and does his absolute best, mate. A whiny brat. Stupid child that doesn't grow up, might. And whenever anyone tells him to grow up, he declares himself a Toys R Us kid, mate. Who doesn't use bro attacks in Mario and Luigi? 
doesn't use Brawl's attack in Mario and Luigi games for prime sake. I've never played the Mario and Luigi games, so I have no idea what that even means, nor am I sure how this is even relevant. First off, lol XD funny media clip of SMG4. Second off, okay, so nobody cares, and therefore that's an issue because... Again, the point of these videos is to be somewhat nitpicky. And even if you are right that nobody cares, that doesn't exactly prove Shari 5 wrong. You do understand that, right? Of course you don't. <laughs> you do know that the Rain character in that clip that you used was Gavin, right? Not Rudy, the one that I actually use as my avatar? Like, why are you punching Gavin? What did Gavin do to you? And? Do you actually have an argument against what Shari is saying? No? Okay. This video is terrible. Well, if you pay attention to the footage you're using, you notice that Eggman is shooting. Meaning, he is moving. Try to hit Sonic and Tails, might. In other words, you f blind. You donkey. <sighs> okay, I never denied that Robotnik was trying to attack Sonic. What I was criticizing was Tony Sonic responding to the complaint of the laser is utterly useless with, well, at least he's doing something. Okay, how does that make the laser any less utterly useless? You know, say everything you want about Shari's videos. At least he's, like, giving reasons as to why he feels the way he does. Unlike you, who is just saying, well, I don't agree, and then calling it a day. Speak for yourself is not an argument. It's a statement, and a pretty obvious one at that, like, yeah, obviously he's speaking for himself. Who else would he be speaking for exactly? But even if you don't agree, just pointing out that he is, in fact, speaking for himself doesn't disprove what he's saying. And yet, arguments like that, these sentence-long rebuttals that basically come down to no you, or no, not even no you. I'm gonna correct myself on that. It's more like, you're saying that. <laughs> you don't even have the no, you're just saying you, and then calling it an argument. Is most of your rebuttals, giant quotes, to Shari's claims. This video's incredibly infuriating because of that. Okay, 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 okay I think we heard enough. As I said before, Shari is a f Karen! That doesn't have a f brain! I mean, for f sake! You should watch Charlie's video, and after watching this, you realize what, or should I say, why Tony did. For f sake! Ugh, I need a drink. You know, I think I just figured out the biggest issue with this video. I understand a lot of people likely are going to dismiss Shadow Ruff as a Tony Sonic fanboy, but I don't think that's entirely accurate. He's not so much angry that I disliked the video by Tony Sonic, as he seems angry that I disliked the video against Shari 5. He's angry that I am saying there could be invalid criticisms of Shari. In the mind of judge of this kangaroo court Shadow Ruff, any accusation against Shari means he's guilty regardless of evidence. This is why so many points in the video are not even really responding to me as they are saying, well, Shari is bad, okay? How does that make Tony Sonic's criticism any more valid? And the answer is it doesn't, but the criticism is against Shari 5, so how much more valid does it need to be? 
it's already valid by default in Shadow's mind. This kind of simplistic thinking makes this commentary incredibly shallow, by the way. None of his points go beyond Shari 5 is bad. And if he thinks that, that's fine. He has every right to. However, he is now attempting to use that position to justify the bad points Tony Sonic made which is just allowing his own hatred to blind him to valid criticisms. I mean, seriously think about this. He essentially just entered Chaos Blast mode, not because of a mistake I made that was so obvious it infuriated him, but because he's really angry at Shari. Okay? If you dislike Shari, that's fine, but first off, why do you feel the need to use my video as a proxy to express your hatred of Shari? And second off, how does that disprove anything I say in my commentary? And the answer should obviously be, it doesn't. Even if Shari is truly terrible, objectively so, that would not make a single thing I said in my commentary on Tony Sonic inherently wrong. All it would mean is that Tony Sonic made bad points against an objectively bad content maker. Which, by the way, is perfectly possible. Uh, quick question, how? The Metal Robotnik fight is, at the very least, a lot harder than the fight in Sonic CD that Shari is showing. If only because the Metal Robotnik boss can actually hurt you, while Robotnik in this fight has springs on his arms that can't hurt you. Now, I should note, this was most likely done because it's the first boss and it was meant to be a simple introduction to how the bosses in Sonic CD work. For those who don't know, Sonic CD's bosses are quite a bit different than the bosses in the other Sonic Genesis games. In the sense that the goal isn't so much to just mindlessly hit Robotnik eight times, as it is to go through this almost puzzle in order to figure out how exactly to hit Robotnik. Robotnik usually only goes down in a couple of hits, but actually hitting him is much harder in every CD boss than it would be in even the most difficult bosses in Sonic 1, 2, or 3 ampersand Knuckles. Sorry, I'm making a point more complicated than a simplistic quip, or, in the case of Tony Sonic, a uh, you argument. So, my mistake, let's get back to the video. I'm about to argument at you. That was until someone respond in the comment and guess who respond to it? You know, comparing yourself to a kangaroo court really isn't the best look, especially given what this video has been so far. Oh, also, what's up with your English? I shouldn't have looked at his 22nd video, and you're threatening to kick me in the crutch? Do you think I walk on crutches or something? I don't get this. Oh, also, even though this didn't happen until after the video, somebody actually replied to his comment and explained why what Shadow was saying was utterly nonsensical. Okay, maybe me. But, guess who did it first before I did? Yes, it's Tony Sonic, and he is spawned from the Robotnik comet and said the Death Egg Robot is one of most iconic bosses in Sonic history because it's difficulty. Yeah, it may be hard, but people love it because of that. Unlike Robotnik, Metal Robotnik besides who so hard it's bullshit. So yeah, you triggered anyone by that, mate. I mean, seriously. What the 
fu- Okay, first off, Tony Sonic was saying this in response to my criticism of his get good scrub argument against Shari regarding the final boss of Sonic 2. It had nothing to do with the bosses in Sonic CD, which is where you put this comment. Second off, I just want to point out that Tony Sonic's comment begins by saying, Well, I've heard you out, and you have a point with most of the criticisms. If you're going to take Tony Sonic's word as law without any kind of independent attempt at verification, then you have to do all or nothing. That's how this works. So, essentially, you are arguing against the video that the person who you believe made a very good point against it thinks was mostly good. So, why are you making this commentary exactly? Nothing about you makes any sense to me. Name one. Because the only other thing I can think of that Robotnik's come up with that ignores your ring count in any other Sonic game is the hand in one boss in Sonic Advance 2. When Tony Sonic says, Superior Machine, he refer Robots that is surpass the original, mate. Name one. Because the only other thing I can think of that Robotnik's come up with that ignores your ring count in any other Sonic game is the hand in one boss in Sonic Advance 2. What? If he's not going to think of any actual arguments, why should I? As in, out of the old and into the new, mate. That is way better. Bigger, better, faster, stronger, mate. Better, stronger. Faster. I mean, in Sonic Fans 1, Eggman think that Beta is better than Gamma, and Omega is much more superior to the most of the E-Series robots. Are you saying these are not count as superior robots? I mean, seriously. What the f- I have no idea what the E-Series robots have to do with this. If you're asking me if I would call any of them inferior to the literal one-hit death laser in Sonic CD, then yes, I would call them inferior. As for if they're superior or inferior to the others, I honestly don't know. I've never taken the time to measure them exactly. Oh, also, this cut off before you finish the word fuck thing is not funny, and you've done it multiple times in this same video. Please stop. By the way, it's all right. You can swear on the internet. Your mum probably isn't going to read it. I know, because she's too busy being fucked by me. What's normal? He listed, like, three things there. Do you mean they're not being checkpoints? Because that's wrong, most other games in the 90s did have checkpoints. And I gotta stop you right there because Tony Sonic is referring to pinball games on the 90s. You donkey. I mean, seriously, there's no checkpoints at pinball games. Only scores, mate. You know, unless the pinball game in question had a story mode like, oh, I don't know, Sonic Spinball did? The specific video I'm going to be covering is his Everything Wrong With, Everything Wrong With on Shari 5's classic Sonic videos, in which he responds to Shari 5's videos on Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic CD, and Sonic Spinball. So, with all of that said, let's get into this. Um, why do we react to anything wrong with Char 5, anything wrong with Sonic Classic games? Why do you do with, you know, the first video of Tony Sonic? Which he explained why he's doing it? I mean, seriously, it's right there! Actually, I think I'm gonna stop you there. Using my convenient foresight, I can confirm that Shadow Ruff doesn't really explain why this really means anything. Yeah, it's the first video explains why Tony Sonic is doing the whole concept to begin with, but no matter the reason, it's ultimately fair of Ephraim to want to commentate on whatever part of Tony Sonic's series of everything wrong with Chari videos if he has problems with it. Unless there's a reason I'm not aware of, the answer should be pretty obvious. I feel like I should make a joke about the Keen Master watermark, but I honestly can't think of anything. Yeah, so, what's the point of that? It makes sense to show us what he using, mate. Seriously, what's a Cybertron? Also, what 
Joke about to use. No, seriously, what the joke about to use? You didn't comment that in the description, Mike. Okay, two things. Firstly, I think it's a problem with the giant watermark taking up the corner of the screen and the fact that Kindmaster is considered, or better yet, is a cheap free Android video editor that many use when they're getting their start with editing or can't get a better one for whatever reason it may be. Secondly, asking what joke Ephraim's about to use when he didn't even know what joke he could make in the situation. Personally, with how you asked the question, I find that kind of funny, if anything. Ow, my eyes! What do I even look at? Okay, Tony, this display looks terrible. All you essentially did was just put your own sin counter at the top of the video, which is a bit of an issue because now I can't see Shari's sin counter. Wouldn't it have made more sense to change the resolution of the video so it could fit your sin counter as well as Shari's? Just saying. Yeah, that is a bit off and confusing, except his videos after this one, he did, you know, explain that to, uh, Charlie's video sin counter is strangely off for some reason. Like, seriously. Okay, to whatever extent Charlie's sin counter is off, this is a problem with Tony Sonic's choice to display his sin count directly above Charlie. So I assume that in spite of whatever this off thing Charlie did is, Tony Sonic could still have found a way to work around that problem on his end. Okay, I've heard several people complain about this part, but as someone who's played Sonic 1 a bunch, I've never had this problem, so what gives? You've never had what problem? The only thing Shari said was that he personally felt the special stages didn't look very good. Are you saying you've never had issues looking at them? Okay, well, how does that disprove Shari's point? Especially considering Shari's point was entirely subjective. Then you need a hint aid practice, clearly, because he said... Ow, my eyes, what do I even look at? He is talking about his eyes are aching from the bright light from the special zone. You... Donkey. I really like the implications of you telling Ephraim to get hearing aids for something that wasn't even said. Lovely. But essentially what I will say is that Chari did not in fact mention bright lights being the specific reason why his eyes were hurting. He just said, and I quote, Ow, my eyes, what do I even look at? We can easily assume that something, if not a couple of things in this special stage are hurting his eyes, but bright lights in particular were not brought up. Whoops. So, wait, you give us this wall that we're supposed to roll into, but you didn't give us an easier way to dash while spinning into it? Come on, that's more than enough space to work up a roll. Really? Because the footage clearly showed Shari attempting to roll, and only breaking through about half of the wall. Yeah, but Chara 5 wanna go all the way through the wall, mate. Which... If you watch Tony Sonic's videos, you realize Charlie is a big CRYING BABY! Might. Okay, so to paraphrase your argument, you got one good look at Ephraim pointing out how that was not, in fact, enough room to work up a roll and say, Well, Chari is dumb and a crybaby. Was this meant to be an argument against Ephraim or just something you wanted to say? If the former, well, calling Chari a crybaby doesn't really do shit against his complaint. Essentially, it's just a souped up ad hominem attack. If the latter, it's the same thing, but significantly more annoying. So, wait, you give us this wall that we're supposed to roll into, but you didn't give us an easier way to dash while spinning into it? You put the special stage ring right after the goalpost, which takes away my control after I touch it? It is possible to run back to it if you're fast enough. Okay, I assume you're referring to that glitch where if you jump at the right time, you can walk around the end screen while it's loading the next level and while it's calculating your points and all that. And if that is what you're referring to, you do know that's a glitch, right? As in something the programmers didn't intend to happen? As I said before, he is a big crying baby! He's bitching about it every time making a video, mate. Again, as I said before, not much of an argument. Simply insulting Chari only serves to make you look just a little petty. Bro, you need to go home. Huh? <laughs> Cope? What? Did you know I was having a hard time playing this game? Chari points out things on the screen, cliche. Also, you're struggling with Sonic 1? Sonic 1 is the simplest of the classic Sonic games. If you're struggling with this game, then you suck. First off, nice elitism there, Tony Sonic. Can I touch it? Really? Use the word turn for a female gay? Might? Really? I think there's a certain type of a pirate doctrine. No, not that type of pirate. Nobody be cool at it. There we go. 
Well, how to talk to you, mate. Oh, and also... Ow! What do horny do? I know what you're thinking, audience, and no, I don't understand what's being said here either. I even turned on the automatic closed captions that were only ever accurate that time when I covered Meta Runner, and while it helped me understand certain words that were said, I still don't understand what Ruff was going for here. I didn't want to make any jokes or drone on and on about your enunciation or the way you talk, because personally, I thought the former would be insulting and the latter just wouldn't be right, but I do have to ask you at least make sense with your jokes, because all I get is that because Ephraim's image has somebody pointing out that somebody is a lesbian pirate dog train? Or pirate doctrine? Essentially, whatever that is, it can talk to Ephraim because apparently Ephraim having the word lesbian on screen means he's horny? Even though lesbian isn't inherently a sexual word, it's just the word for a woman in love with another woman? Or at least that's the most basic definition of the word. Eh. Second off, I like how you say it's the simplest, not the easiest, and then say it's an issue that Charmy is struggling with it. Again, even though simple and easy are not the same things. For example, the original Mega Man is an overall simpler game than, say, Mega Man 5 or 6. But most people would argue that the first Mega Man is harder than 5 or 6. Do you see the issue here? Okay, 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 enough. okay. why does Cybertron you choose Mega Man, the gun shooter game, as comparison to Sonic difficulty? You realize Sonic is a runner, which is kind of involved with the, you know, spin attack? And Mega Man is a shooter, as in hold and shoot position. Mate, seriously, seriously, you can compare it to another game that has similar to Sonic, but no, you have to go for the gunner type of guy. Look, when the overall point is that simple and easy aren't inherently synonyms, pointing out how Mega Man and Sonic are different styles of gameplay doesn't really mean shit at the end of the day, it's just a random factoid. And even then, they're both still platforming games, just Mega Man games are run and gun platformers, while Sonic games are speed based platformers. Different in execution, but with the same soul. But either way, it doesn't really matter, does it? Now, you may wonder exactly why the left wants to spread this agenda. Well, it's because they're after this delicious boy pussy. How the hell am I supposed to know to hold back in order to actually jump off this water slide? You figure it out. Well, I can't argue with that. No need to sarcastic, mate. Why not? Where's the rest of this interjection? Probably where my family is non-existent. This game was made in the era where games tell you almost nothing, so it's our only option. Yeah, and that led to a variety of highly cryptic games that were badly designed because of just how cryptic they were. Super Pitfall, Mylon's Secret Castle, Simon's Quest, all of these come to mind as examples. Yeah, that is off. Except the Sonic the Hedgehog 1 is a thing since 1991. Meaning that it's, um, uh, you know, doesn't have the question mark games that the 3D game does have, might? I feel as if you're not fully understanding the point that Ephraim is trying to make here. Because the overall point that Ephraim is trying to make is that just because these older games were cryptic and thus Sonic would of course be similar since that was the style of the time, it doesn't inherently mean that that time period excuses the cryptic nature of those games. I think your point is you trying to say that, well of course Sonic was made in 91 so it didn't have the hint system it would have in later games. Problem is, that isn't really arguing with anyone except Char. I guess, but I don't really believe that's who this point is directed at, since from the sound of it, you're saying this to Ephraim. But this doesn't really mean anything against him, however, so ultimately, I'm just left wondering what you were trying to achieve with this point. This isn't really a boss battle, this is just platforming. I mean, you still have the hit egg, man, don't you? No you don't. You just have to survive the gauntlet and make it to the capsule at the end of the stage. You don't have to hit Eggman a single time to beat this boss. In fact, it's not really a boss so much as it is more an obstacle course, if I'm being honest. Yeah, you had a point on the, you know, not really a boss fight, but a chase one. Exit is a YouTuber who, well, listed as, uh, well, being a part of a boss battle. No, seriously, check it out, mate. Well, yes, it is a boss battle, but, but the point Ephraim and Chari, by extension, are saying is that it doesn't feel like one. Ephraim says it's more of an obstacle course, and Chari is saying it's just platforming. Pointing out how somebody has it listed under Sonic 1 boss battles isn't really doing anything against that because it may be an official boss battle, but they're trying to say it doesn't feel like one since the focus isn't actually damaging Eggman, but surviving a platforming section. I'm from I don't know if that's what it sounds good. Heh <laughs> funny. But seriously, typos aren't sins. They're nitpicks. Okay, first off, 
nitpicks are sins, that's kind of how this whole format works. You're supposed to nitpick the product you're sinning. Second off, why aren't typos sins exactly? There's still something wrong with the product that therefore could count as an issue with it, so why can't they count as sins? Like I said to Keyblade Master, nitpicks aren't wrong, they're just minor and usually irrelevant to the overall quality of the product. Yeah, except Charter 5 always, uh, I know, nitpicks anything on the games that he's doing. Might, I mean, seriously, he does. He's misusing it, might. He's, he's misusing it, might. How? I don't know why Charter 5 is doing this. Nitpicks are not sin. <sighs> also, really? You still talk about the produce nitpicks, might? So I take this entire point as just, no, you're wrong, with the best counter argument being, he nitpicks everything, which ignores Ephraim's entire argument. Which is that nitpicking is the point of the format in the first place, and that nitpicks are still criticism, just smaller ones that don't affect the overall thing being nitpicked. My point is that I don't really see what this argument you make sets out to achieve. Discount Green Hill Zone. Sorry, but that doesn't work since Emerald Hill is different in both looks and design. How? They're both open green areas that exist to teach you how to play the game. They're also both fast paced and oh yeah, the second word in both of their names is literally the same. How are they different exactly? Oh, I don't know, maybe uh, this might? Seriously, look at between them. One of them is mountain terrain with waterfall at the background while the other is a lush green land. And yes, I know they're both called hills at the name but doesn't mean you have to connect them as one. All Asian look at that, uh, I mean, uh, all country look at the same. You racist motherfucker. Right, so one area of Green Hill Zone has hills and one area of Emerald Hill Zone doesn't, therefore they are not the same. Take that, liberals. But in all seriousness, while Green Hill and Emerald Hill are not identical nor the same stage, Emerald Hill sets out to be Sonic 2's version of Green Hill Zone, which is clear from the way it's designed with the green plains, palm trees, water background, and the name Emerald Hill, as Emerald is a gemstone that is green. So while perhaps Green Hill is more hilly than Emerald Hill, and yes, Green Hill has waterfalls than Emerald Hill apparently doesn't, it does actually, there are still various similarities within the stages that help Chari and Ephraim's point. Okay, how is that a boss? Because it still attacks you, even though it's really slow, and you still have to attack it. Wait, so your definition of a boss is just something that attacks you and something that you have to attack? You do know under that definition, basically every badnik in this game would count as a boss, right? Oh boy. You need to stop compare one word or place or something that is out of order as same, right? Stop that. Seriously, stop it. When he said it attacks you, Tony Stark refer to the boss fight not the Batnik fight. You know, these little robots. Yeah, yeah, we know he's talking about the Batniks, no need to show us and say, you know, these things. Whatever, you're kind of missing the point here. Ephraim is criticizing the way Tony Sonic defines this boss battle, and argues that by his logic he can even call the regular generic enemies boss battles. What I'm trying to say is that by pointing out how Tony Sonic is specifically talking about boss battles, you don't understand that Ephraim is trying to say that his definition makes everything come off as a boss battle. We are really fucking fair ground, or just bust out of the wall, I have very little time to react. You really expected the bad guys to play fair? Not to mention the wall he breaks out of is colored a bit differently, which could tip you off. How dare he want the game to have fair level design? Is it just me, or does this sound less like a response and more like apologetics? No, because Tony Sonic is act like a father to Chara Fies, who act as a teenager, my right? A whiny, brat, stupid child that doesn't grow up, my right? Who doesn't use bro attacks in Mario and Luigi? Doesn't use bro's attack in Mario and Luigi games. I feel like something important is being said here, but I, for the life of me, cannot understand him under his Daft Punk filter, so TLDR, watch Hunter x Hunter 99. Chilling out of the way, I lied, I, I do understand him, but from a logical standpoint, I still don't get this. Because seriously, this is a similar case to a while ago, the whole point is just, well, Chari is a crybaby, and therefore he is wrong. Shadowruff brings up some example of Chari allegedly not using the bro attacks in Mario & Luigi, but this doesn't really mean anything here, because even if Chari is is some sort of crybaby, it doesn't make his annoyance at the fact that the level design has an enemy appear out of nowhere and knock him down any less invalid because that's a fair thing to be annoyed with because he felt he didn't have an opportunity to properly react to that. Why does Sonic and tell his names and faces plastered all over this casino? Do they own it? Who built this place? Nobody cares! Hey! Nobody cares! First off, lol XD funny media clip of SMG4. Second off, okay, so nobody cares. And therefore, that's an issue because, again, the point of these videos is to be somewhat nitpicky. And even if you are right that nobody cares, that doesn't exactly prove Shari 5 wrong. 
You do understand that, right? Of course you don't. <laughs> you f idiot. Charlie always questioned about anything, and Tony Sonic only seen him with that because Charlie never shut up. Even Sonic 06, which you should have looked it up at today, you realize that Tony Sonic, I mean, Charlie 5, always complain about it. So yeah, Charlie 5 deserved that sin. You idiot. Is this exaggerated anger, or are you really this pissed over Ephraim not agreeing with the sin? Because if so, that's really unnecessary and makes you come off as kind of an ass, not gonna lie. Ultimately, I'm not even going to bother with the rest of this point because it's basically the same as the last one and the one three interjections before that. So if you really want my opinion, just rewind the video to those areas because the same argument applies here as it did there. Oh, I guess there's just no boss. Act three, was it Sonic 1? While I will admit that Metropolis Zone is pretty hard by this game's standards, a third act isn't too bad considering it's the second last level of the game. No, Sky Chase and Death Egg Zone don't count as levels. More like chase sequences and final battlegrounds. So, wait, Sky Chase doesn't count as a level because it's a chase sequence, so does the first act of Marouge Shaloon from Sonic Mania also not count as a level under this way of thinking? I mean, if that's his logic, then no, because Mirage Saloon, or really Act 1 of Mirage Saloon, because in Act 2 this is not the case, it's basically the same thing as Sky Chase. Sonic and Tails flying on a plane to the next level. Now obviously that logic is very questionable, because it's not like you aren't doing what you usually do in other Sonic stages in Mirage Saloon Act 1 or Sky Chase, the only difference is that you're on a plane the entire time, but arguing back with, wouldn't that make this other stage not a stage 2? Wouldn't debunk it, it'd just be you raising the question. Now my question is, what makes Sky Chase just a chase sequence and not a stage? The plane? Because again, it's not like it plays any differently from the rest of the game aside from you not having any ground to stand on. Literally, of course, I should add. This, especially compared to the plane levels in Adventure and Unleash, which change the regular gameplay a lot with these shoot-em-up minigames. Would the reason this is a chase sequence be that Sonic and Tails are trying to catch up with Eggman on a ship? I guess making this a contextual thing? In that case, what makes it so different from any other stage? Because that's what is happening in basically every stage. I guess just take out the ship. I'm going completely off rails here, but this topic wasn't brought up in Ephraim's video, and I'm really confused by the logic Tony Sonic uses here. Oh, also, Shari's issue wasn't that the third act of Metropolis Zone was hard. I don't even know where you got that. It was that Metropolis Zone was the only zone in the game to have three acts. Second of all, what chase section are you talking about? The only section we do is flying on a plane, get shoot out of the gun. Yes, there's a gun in the Sonic Mania, though it's not the first one. And fighting this caterpillar thing before it got shut down in the first act, in the second act, at the end of the uh, stage, we fight a clone of Fang. Yeah, what chase level are you talking about, mate? Uh, I am going to lose my mind listening to all of this. But okay, to reestablish Ephraim's point, because I sure as hell forgot it after hearing you go on and on, it's that by Tony Sonic's logic, logic that isn't properly explained, I might add, would Mirage Saloon also be a chase sequence given it is a similar stage because they're both set on airplanes. That is what Ephraim means by chase sequence. And also, if you play Sonic Advance 2, Scrap Brain Zone, you have some struggle at every area that you try to, you know, encounter with. I mean, for prime sake, this bug really f you in the worst way impossible, mate. Seriously, did you even play Sonic, F Sonic the Hedgehog 2, mate? I think you were, once again, misunderstanding. I think you think that Ephraim is saying that Metropolis Act 3 isn't hard when he's actually saying that Tony Sonic is acting like Chari was upset at the stage's difficulty when in actuality, Chari was just expressing confoundment at the fact that Metropolis is the only stage with a third third act when the majority of stages have two with exceptions being Sky Chase, Wing Fortress, and Death Egg Zone. What did you even think that laser was gonna do? At least he didn't sit there like, oh, I guess it's time to die. And? Did you actually have an argument against what Shari is saying? No? Okay. This video is terrible. Well, if you pay attention to the footage you're using, you notice that Eggman is shooting, meaning he is moving. Try to hit Sonic and Tails, mate. In other words, you f blind. Why are you so mad? Did Ephraim eat all of your pizza and leave you with the bill or something? 
because if so, I relate. But also, again, you were missing the point, which makes your anger that the more weird. Honestly, I don't even know where your arguments are coming from anymore because at times they can feel so disconnected from the points being made by Ephraim. Ephraim is saying that Tony Sonic saying, well, at least Eggman didn't just sit around and do nothing when Chari Sin was, what was that laser going to do, wasn't an argument against what Chari was saying. I think your point is simply a reiteration of what Tony Sonic was saying, that you should notice that Eggman is moving to attack here, so he's doing something something, but this doesn't add anything. It's just reiterating what was said before, but with more words and less thoughts given. <sighs> this video fucking blows. I can't believe they expect people to beat two bosses in a row, one which takes eight hits and the other takes 16 with zero rings. Not one damn safety net. Well, excuse the game for wanting to give you a challenging final boss. I know someone's going to argue with me on this, but to that I say, man up and fight the damn robot. So your entire argument basically comes down to get good scrub. Okay. Wow. Really? Really? As I said before, Chari is a f***ing Karen. He doesn't give a damn that the game is perfect. I don't mind some, but others? Bring <laughs> Yet again, another argument that boils down to Chari is a crybaby, therefore he is wrong, because fuck not liking a difficult level that requires you win without taking any damage, something that may not be fun for everyone. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but did I just hear you call Sonic 2 perfect? You know, I'm not even gonna open up that can of worms, let's keep it closed. Fucking hate worms. These special stages are disorienting as hell with their trippy ass backgrounds and pseudo 3D. Why would you focus on the background? That's not where the action is. Because it's still part of the special stage, and it's incredibly, for lack of a better word, noticeable. I think this part of the video honestly just speaks for itself and represents the soul of this video. Ephraim saying some of the most inoffensive things that somehow rile up Shadow Ruff resulting in generally non-arguments. No offense, I get this video is meant to be a reaction, not a commentary by all means, but when your response to something said is just shut the fuck up, here's a video of me slapping you, then you come off as incredibly petty and for some audience members that might result in them thinking you're incredibly unlikely. If this was pre-2020, I would have probably been shouting at you to shut up because it's kind of annoying, but not only am I in a school closet right now, I also know that getting visibly frustrated at everything I don't like can make you look pretty bad. I'm just saying this anger is completely unnecessary, as is this point. Now, you may wonder exactly why the left wants to spread this agenda. Well, it's because they're after this delicious boy pussy. This is factually the worst boss in Sonic the Hedgehog history. Sonic 4's Metal Robotnik has entered the chat. Uh, quick question, how? The Metal Robotnik fight is at the very least a lot harder than the fight in Sonic CD that Shari is showing. If only because the Metal Robotnik boss can actually hurt you while Robotnik in this fight has springs on his arms that can't hurt you. Now, I should note, this was most likely done because it's the first boss and it was meant to be a simple introduction to how the bosses in Sonic CD work. For those who don't know, Sonic CD's bosses are quite a bit different than the bosses in the other Sonic Genesis games. In a sense, the goal isn't so much just mindlessly hit Robotnik eight times as it is to go through this almost puzzle in order to figure out how exactly to hit Robotnik. Robotnik usually only goes down in a couple of hits, but actually hitting him is much harder in every CD boss than it would be in even the most difficult bosses in Sonic 1, 2, or 3 Ampersand Knuckles. Sorry, I'm making a point more complicated than a simplistic quip, or in the case of Tony Sonic, a uh, you argument. So, my mistake, let's get back to the video. I'm about to argument at you. That was until someone respond in the comment, and guess who respond to it? Okay, maybe me, but guess who did it first before I did? Yes, it's Tony Sonic, and he respond from the Robotnik comment and said the Death Egg Robot is one of the most iconic bosses in Sonic history because it's difficulty. Yeah, it may be hard, but people love it because of that. Unlike Robotnik, better Robotnik besides, who so hard it's bullshit. So yeah, you triggered anyone by that, right? I mean, seriously. What the fuck? <laughs> you didn't realize it, but you stepped into the range of my stand. It's called a counter argument. If that's a song that exists, hold up, let me look it up on Spotify. Ha! <laughs> by the Hal Goost. Let me give it a good listen. Wow, this shit's awful. Maybe we should rename my stand. How about... Please stop. 
I think there's a song like that by Bentelau. Yeah, I get enough. Okay, but for such a long point, my counter argument, or my stand, please stop, is pretty simple. The argument Tony Sonic is making in the comment is in regards to Charlie's comments about the Death Egg being difficult. And he brings up Metal Robotnik, which is an example of what the Death Egg is not, unfairly hard. By the way, I looked it up and there isn't actually a Sonic 4 boss known as Metal Robotnik or Metal Eggman just in case he meant that. I've just been assuming he's talking about perhaps a Death Egg Robot Sonic 4 variation since much of his criticism and description, as bare bones as they are mind you, match up with that one. Now you may wonder exactly why the left one wants to spread this agenda. Well, it's because they're after this delicious boy pussy. Eggman made an instant death laser that ignores my ring count and never uses it again. Because he's made several superior machines since then. Name one. Because the only other thing I can think of that Robotnik's come up with that ignores your ring count in any other Sonic game is the hand in one boss in Sonic Advance 2. When Tony Sonic says superior machine, he refer robots that is surpass the original, mate. As in, out of the old and into the new, mate. That is way better. Bigger, better, faster, stronger, mate. I mean, in Sonic fans, one, Eggman think that Beta is better than Gamma, and Omega is much more superior to the most of the E series robots. Are you saying these are not count as superior robots? I should have made a drinking game out of the amount of times I make arguments that are just, you're missing the point, actually. Though to be fair, now that I think about it, I'm in school and I'm not even old enough to drink yet. Got two more years left in me after all. Point is, if Eggman made a machine so powerful that it shoots a laser that instantly kills Sonic, whether or not he has any rings, wouldn't it be more efficient than any of the machines he's made since, since that still has to contend with Sonic's ring count, thus making those machines not superior? Thinking about it, I envision there is a counter argument against this, but neither you nor Tony Sonic give one that isn't, well, there's stronger guys out there, so I'm left to just agree with Chari and Ephraim here. Now, you may wonder exactly why the left wants to spread this agenda. Well, it's because they're after this delicious boy pussy. If and when you die, and trust me, you will die in this game, every path you unlock resets mean you have to unlock everything again. <laughs> and you can say, oh, that's not so bad, it's just pinball. No, it is not. The objective of pinball is to score points no more. Here, I have to get emeralds, we should beat the boss, and move on to the next stage, which is impossible with a pinball platformer. And yes, you can slightly move left and right midair, but that hardly makes a difference if you're bouncing off shit all the time, picking up momentum every time you do. Hey, this is normal for games that came out in the 90s. What's normal? He listed like three things there. Do you mean they're not being checkpoints? Because that's wrong. Most other games in the 90s did have checkpoints. And I gotta stop you right there because Tony Sonic is referring to pinball games on the 90s. Well, he didn't say pinball, he just said games in the 90s. He could have said games like this, games in the style, the likes, but he sure as hell didn't allude to it being specific to pinball games. Okay, I think I've seen enough. I've been at this for long enough, and using my convenient foresight, there really isn't anything else worth covering in this video, aside from the brief moment of Shadowruff saying, do research, and I'm led to wonder how doing any bit of research would have helped any of the points Ephron made. Otherwise, the rest of the video is pretty lame, but I don't feel like covering it. <sighs> It goes without saying, but this video is pretty bad. From the amount of times you missed the point Ephraim is going for, the amount of arguments that are just Char is a care and therefore he's wrong, the amount of times you get needlessly angry over a dumb internet video, as much as I kept it to myself, this video absolutely baffled me to the point of often irritation. The anger is probably my biggest issue, even if my other issues are still big. Your anger is just so unnecessary, and I ask that if you ever do a video like this, downplay that shit. If it's for the sake of exaggeration, make it clear you aren't serious and are just playing around. Another issue I had was your wording and manner of speaking, but I assume this is due to a lack of understanding of the English language, perhaps because you're not a native speaker, you just have trouble with words. Therefore, I don't really want to dog you for that, but I will acknowledge that 
but it did make stringing together points really hard. So if I misinterpreted your words, that's why and I apologize for that. Otherwise, that's all I'm going to say. I don't feel like saying calling Chari a Karen is not a point or you missed the point anymore, so I'll leave it at that. It, it goes without saying, but your video wasn't great. But that's not to say if you ever do this again, the same could be said for next time. So I wish you luck if you ever do this again.